Kansas leading 55 to 32. Let's send you now to a game going on in Seattle. Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham are there, and so are UNLV and Utah. Seven to six to score. Here at the Kingdom in Seattle, Utah with the ball and a one-point lead over UNLV in the first three minutes of this game. And hitting from the corner is Byron Wilson. So four different youths have scored already. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham. And on the other end, it's George Ackles with the basket. As after a made field goal, the center has the ability to get down the court and get a layup. Walter Watts, 260, walks with it. Now, that's a tough matchup for Ackles, playing against Watts. He's giving away about 50 pounds. Paul Afiaki comes in at center. Now, right in the middle of your screen, you can see Ackles just feeding Josh Grant down the court and getting the layup. Apiaki comes in for Watts. Apiaki, a 6'10 junior from Tonga. Gives them more size, shot blocking ability. And George Ackles George. hits his second jump shot. He played only 13 minutes against Georgetown. Now, the difference defensively with Apiaki in the game is he's going to try and front Larry Johnson, where Watts plays behind him. Apiaki goes up. Great defense inside by Ackles, who blocks the shot into the hands of Larry Johnson. A three-on-two break now for UNLV. Augman, the fourth man, hits the shot, and it's 13 to 10 UNLV. I know it's a close game. I don't know if Richard Jarris is happy with the tempo right now. He wants to hold the ball. Another turnover. Certainly not the turnover. Here is Anderson Hunt. He hits a three. Three-point basket of the game. Now, that's one of the players that Rick Majerus felt that he did not want to allow to beat them tonight. And we see that Hunt is off to a flying start. He has seven points already. Rebels on a 9 nothing run. Hunt, the second leading start over 17 a game for UNLV. Majerus will go to his bench. He's got two players at the scoring table. McGrath. Inside to Tate from Wilson. That, that'll count. And the foul as well. And it may be Ackles with his first foul. Iron Tate with the basket. Now, the thing that's impressive about this is Tate just takes his time, gives him the pump fake. You see Ackles turn his head and go up strong for the shot. Two for Getting back to the point, but that, that time down the court offensively, Utah showed some patience. It's few previous times they were rushing things. The problem is when you have a little bit of success, you know, the kids, they want to go after them. It, the coach knows, hey, we have to have, our, we have just patience out there and make sure we use the clock. Well, Jerry Tarkanian told us that, you know, most teams lose that patience and they start to go freelance early. Regional semifinal action tomorrow. Eastern Michigan against North Carolina from East Rutherford. St. John's and Ohio State from Pontiac. It all begins 7.30 Eastern time. And then the second half, Temple and Oklahoma State in the East and UConn and Duke in the Midwest. Tomorrow on CBS Sports. So far, the tempo is to the, to the running red suiting. Johnson out to Ackles off his hand into the hands of Phil Dixon who came into the game along with Craig Rydalch for Utah. Rydalch with the ball, good three-point shooter. Anderson Hunt is not giving him an inch. Uh, Tyrone Tate tipped inside. Johnson really got it away from Josh Grant. Here's Grant. Goaltending is called against George Ackles, and Grant now has four. That was his first field goal attempt for Grant, averaging 18 a game. Had a season's high of 29 against Michigan State in the second round. Straight man to man. That's the man they'll let Ogden shoot the jump shot. Leaving Larry Johnson open. Rebound by Dixon. He's a 6'5 swingman. Out of Toronto. Grew up in Jamaica. Grant gets it inside. And Tyrone Tate has the shot blocked by Ackley. Grabs by one. Utah staying with him so far. Staying with him. Tempo, though, is in favor of 
of UNLV. Three-point basket by Stacy Augman, coming in averaging 17 a game. One thing when you play this ball club in UNLV, when you have the defensive pressure they apply, when someone gets in trouble and can't make the pass, you need a center to come out and relieve that pressure. Tate works it inside of McGrath. And a great feed to Afiaki. Grant with the assist. And another three-point basket, this time by Hunt. UNLV is four for five from three-point range, and Anderson Hunt has three of them. Well, it was the penetration of Anthony forcing defensive help. They're trying to spread the floor a little bit more than they normally do, Utah. Tip from behind by Anthony. No over and back. No backcourt violation. Jarris will go to his bench again at the next dead ball. Here's Grant, lost the ball. Coming out of the pack, Stacy Augman and a Utah foul on Paul Afiaki. His first foul. This is Elmore Spencer, the seven foot junior from Atlanta, who is coming into the game. And George Ackles will sit down. One thing when you watch UNLV run their half-court offense is how they spread the court. The spacing between each player really makes it difficult to get help defensively. Three-point attempt. Misses by Anderson Hunt. Only the second miss by the Rebels. Jimmy Soto, a 5'10 guard from Salt Lake City, is in there. McKay McGrath has checked back in. Soto's a tough kid. Tough kid. He and Tate have, are the ones that have to control the tempo of this ball game. Five-point lead for UNLV. Byron Wilson short with it. The rebound. Larry Johnson is averaging 11 boards a game. Inside, losing his footing was Anderson Hunt, and it will be Utah's possession. Josh Grant goes to the bench. One of the problems as a coach, Rick Majerus has a problem making decisions on how he would prepare for this game. You don't want to make too many drastic changes with your ball club. You've had a great year. And if you make too many changes, the psychological effect, the players feel, oh, geez, the coach doesn't think we can win either if we're making all these changes. Psychology is a big part of it. A lot of teams are psyched out even before they play the Rebels. Right off, misses a three, and the rebound by Apiak. McGrath. Right off with a fake. He's got an open jumper. Oh, yeah, Utah is really giving UNLV all they can handle, fighting for loose balls and rebounds. Well, Afiaki is his presence is being felt on the glass. We have a timeout on the floor. Semifinals. We're going to keep you up to date on what's going on with UNLV Utah. 22 to 17 is the score now. Mike Frances along with Pat O'Brien and. What is going on with Kansas, Indiana, Mike? 62 to 42, uh, Kansas leads. Pat, they haven't been able to chip into it at all. Whatever Bob Knight tries, it doesn't work this evening. And Kansas has had all the answers for Indiana start to finish, and they are in total command of the game in every aspect of the ball game. How much of a shock is this to you? It's a big surprise. I thought that Indiana had the goods to get to the Final Four this year. They're a young team. They're a year away from great things, but I thought they could slip through this year, and they've been overwhelmed in this ballgame. To me, a very, very big surprise. All right, uh, we'll keep you posted on this game. 62 to 44, 13 and about 40 seconds, uh, 13 minutes and 40 seconds left. Let's send you back to uh, Utah UNLV. Run but Rebels now lead. they're able to use the clock. Right off. Gets inside the basket, counts, and a foul. They use the clock, and they got a chance now to cut the lead by the Rebels to two. Very difficult for players, and it's a tough decision by Jerry Tarkanian. When you're out aggressive, and now you say we're going to go into a zone, they lose a little bit of that aggressiveness when they go into the zone defense. Foul was on Elmore Spencer. That was his first foul. McGrath goes out of the game, and here's Josh Grant, who has scored four points thus far. He's the leading scorer for the Red, the running Utes. And Craig Rydolph, good free throw shooter on the line. The junior from Oakley, Utah. 
Utah is shooting 53%. That's pretty impressive, but how about UNLV at 69%? They're shooting it. They've turned it over, though, four times. That's the reason for the, the, the game being as close as it, as it is right now. Just under 11 minutes to go in the first half. Spencer. Johnson. And they run away from him, for sure. Well, they ran away because he made sure of it. He pushed two players out of the oh, way. Oh, yeah. He made some room for himself. <laughs> 24 to 20 in favor of UNLV. Now we see the man-to-man -man defense. Jordan. Nice shot by Adonis Jordan. Tough shot. Tough shot. Off the dribble. He has seven. Kansas 64-46. Kansas in a 1-2-2. Two, two. Force the jump shot. Penetrate the gap. Get it. Inside, swing it out. Bailey for three. And pushing off is number 32, Eric Anderson. Walter Watts in the game. Uses a screen from Johnson. Spencer, offensive rebound. Johnson again. There's that strength on the offensive glass. It's like the varsity against the junior varsity in that one sequence. Yeah, it, it, I thought this was going to be an interesting matchup. Tate, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Watts playing against Larry Johnson. Offensive foul against Byron Wilson. That will be his first foul. Of course, not very often does Larry Johnson have to face another forward or player with his the same size, well, maybe a little stronger at 6'8", at, uh, 260, Johnson 6'6", 250. Tyrone Tate has checked back in as the point guard. Larry Johnson. Clark was raving about his defense yesterday. He had Johnson 17 of his 20 points in the second half against Georgetown. He's playing up top. Hunt. Anthony travel. We're at the Kingdom in Seattle. Seton Hall has already advanced, and now they'll play the winner of UNLV and Utah. And it is 26 to 20 the score is. 26-20, UNLV is in front with 9.38 remaining. And in the game is Phil Dixon for Utah. Too many points scored in the first 10 minutes of this game. At this rate, UNLV will break the 100 barrier. I don't think Utah can win a ball game and score over 100 points uh, at the offensive end of the court against this UNLV team. They have to slow the pace. And on the shot clock, Hoffman was overplaying on Grant, and it was effective as the ball got away. That's the sixth turnover by Utah. But now they're doing a better job getting back defensively after turnover. Hoffman travels, so Hunt and Hoffman have traveled in the last minute or so. Rick Majerus, a little butterball, I would say, and one of the most delightful coaches we have run across. Uh, he, well, the funny thing is that he lives in a hotel. And, uh, you know, looking at him, you know immediately that he's got the key to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does, really. Yes, he does. Would I tell a story? Oh, no. uh, uh, not about Rick. Jimmy Soto, Grant, Tate, Wilson, Watt. That basket's going to shake for a while. Walter Watt. I've been so impressed with Grant's ability to beat Stacy Ogman off the dribble. Uh, you wouldn't expect that. We're talking about maybe the best defensive player in the country, or at least being able to play on the perimeter defensively. Inside out, and a three-point basket by Stacy Ogman, his second of the game. He's got eight points, and the lead now is seven. Utah going with their two point guards in the game at the same time it means more offensive pressure on Josh Grant to score. The only true big man is Walter Watts. Here is Dixon. Bill Dixon misses. Rebound in the hands of Tyrone Tate. Soto. Three. He's got it. 
Anderson Hunt ran by him and fouled Jimmy Soto, who hits a three and will go to the line. Tate making a good decision, finding Soto. Hunt jumping at him, foul, and he's going to the line. And a chance for a four-point play for Jimmy Soto. But just when you think UNLV is ready to start the track meet, run away from the running youth, they both have running in their nicknames as the running rebels and the running youth. Utah hangs in. The longer they hang in there, the more confident you get. George Ackles replaces Larry Johnson, who goes out with six points. That was the first three-point basket of the game by Utah. And a four-point play by Jimmy Soto. He's just relaxing, Tark, enjoying the game. Not really. Those of you watching Kansas, Indiana, 71-54, on the bottom of your screen, you see Utah and UNLV, and Mike Francesa, it's 39-33. to The Utes are hanging in there. They've done a very good job, Pat. They have balanced the floor well. They've kept UNLV from getting out on the break, and they've shot the ball close to 50% in the first half, which is a heck of an accomplishment against that UNLV defense. Utah has done a very good job in the first half. And we'll see uh, that game after Kansas and Indiana. We'll see the finish of uh, UNLV and Utah. And Let's send you back to Greg Gumbel and Quinn Buckley. Turn of final score. What it means is in the southeast, Arkansas will meet Kansas for the right to move on to the final four. So for Quinn Buckner and Jim Gray, I'm Greg Gumbel saying so long from the Charlotte Coliseum. The final score, Kansas 83, Indiana 65. We'll see you again on Saturday. Right now, let's send you to New York and Pat O'Brien. New York with Mike Francesa, and let's give Kansas their due. Pat, I thought they were sensational all night. They were in control from start to finish. They overwhelmed the uh, Indiana team that is probably still a year away, although I thought they were a Final Four team, and a lot of people, some people even picked them to win it this year. They just they just overwhelmed Indiana in every facet of the game tonight. Indiana was never in a ball game. They trailed 26-6 to six early, and they never could catch up. They couldn't chase this Kansas team, which is so well-drilled. It is a very, very well-drilled team. Boy, and Indiana just looked beat when they walked off the court. They were beaten. All right, uh, let's send you out now to uh, Seattle. Dick Stockton and Billy Cunningham are calling this one. UNLV and Utah. Let's go out for the action. Good. Count the basket for UNLV scoring the first basket of the second half. Then in front of Utah, 43 to 35. That's Josh Grant, who is the leading scorer with eight points. McGrath, or Watts picking up his second foul for Utah. And the first time tonight, UNLV attempts a free throw shot, and that's by Larry Johnson. And a three-point play makes it 44 to 35. Now in the first half, we saw the running Rebels show us spurts of the good aggressive defense, forcing some turnovers, but they were not able to sustain it. McKay McGrath, Josh Grant, the leading scorer, inside the ball thrown away, turns it over. Walter Watts benched if he doesn't. Way in at 260, and he's never missed. And Richard Garrett said, I'm a poor role model for that. <laughs> he sure is. But do as I say, not as I do. That's right. Grant defending against Augman. Man to man, Watson Johnson. Tate against Greg Anthony. Grant has the tough job against Ackles. Gets the rebound on the miss. Actually, I meant that Watts against Larry Johnson. Maybe they're all tough. You get this far in the NCAA championships, you have to be tough. Inside to Byron Wilson. Doesn't go for him in the rebound by Stacy Offman. Nine point lead, Anderson Hunt. And a blocking foul called against McGrath. Uh, let's take a look now, Bill, at the Charlotte Southeast Regional. Arkansas and Kansas have advanced, and they'll play the regional final on Saturday. Big win for Roy Williams. Now, that last play down the court, even though Hunt was fouled, we saw some of the strategy 
being employed by Majerus. Having McGrath, the forward, who's going out of the game now, uh, back there defensively. He wants to have three people back defensively any time a shot goes up. Jimmy Soto came in to replace McGrath. Larry Johnson. Well, the one player that's sharp is Larry Johnson. He, the last two times down the court, we've seen him get to the loose balls and be able to convert the baskets. Reverse layup by Josh Grant. So Utah playing with three guards, along with Grant and Watts and Paul Apiaki coming in soon. Well, which is a, an excellent move because Stacy Ogman is not a post-up player. Ackles over Grant. Good shot by Ackles, who has 10 points. And the other thing it does is it forces Larry Johnson now to have to guard Grant. Stacy Ogman is their defensive ace. Wilson hits a three from the corner. Byron Wilson with his first three-point basket. 48 to 40 in favor of the running Rebels. Here's Anderson Hunt. He hit a bunch of threes in the first half. And a quick outlet pass from Soto to Tate. Rebels get back. Floor has been slippery, and we've seen the effects of time. The both games. Now Utah should be able to move the ball easier against this defense. Watts from Tate. Just too much if you're Tarkanian. Too many people penetrating to the basket. And bodies flying through the air. That was Greg Anthony going into Josh Grant. That'll be an offensive foul against the Rebels, I think. Now the question is, was he fouled before the contact with Grant? Now they call this foul on Byron Wilson. So it was Wilson who you saw was the third man, the guy on the left, who was called for the foul. That's Wilson, and that is his second foul. And Wilson got Anthony before he charged into Grant. Lead is six. That was, that's what it was at halftime in favor of UNLV. Soto trying to stay with Hunt. He did a good job beating him, moving his feet defensively. Elmore Spencer has come in the game, and now we'll have a UNLV foul. Is that on Larry Johnson? It is. It's his first foul. But it continues to show how the running Rebels are really not on the same page out there. Not in sync. Exactly right. And, and, and especially at the defensive end of the court. Uh, I haven't seen them in the last few weeks play good solid D where they are stopping that penetration, being a, able to apply the pressure and then beat their man and create some turnovers. There's an example right there. Reaching, grabbing, not moving their feet defensively. Greg Anthony. Now, if anybody's going to get them started, that, now it's in the ha play hands of the players. Jerry Tarkanium has, has told them, has warned them what they're doing. This is what you're going to have to do to repeat again as a champion. Now, the players have responded, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Well, the players have got to react at this point. And the player that should lead them right now is Anthony, the point guard, getting their defense established. There is Grant missing. Greg Anthony, Iro Tate defending him. They're taking away that fast break of UNLV. Ah! Behind the back dribble, Anthony Wild. Two wild plays by Anthony, and Johnson is fouled, and that is not what a leader would do on the floor. No, you, you know what happens sometimes is someone like an Anthony who is a leader. He's trying to put, take it upon himself. I'm going to get things going. And sometimes you, you play out of out of sync, and you're, you're just being disruptive to the whole team instead of settling the team down offensively, making sure you execute. Tyrone Tate committing the foul. That is his first, and it is the fourth team foul against Utah. Here's the last play. Let's listen to them battle underneath. Watch what's going on underneath. 
What did we see again, though? Larry Johnson getting to the loose ball. That's three times now in the second half he has been able to do that and put it on the scoreboard with some points. 14 points and nine rebounds, five of them off the offensive glass for Larry Johnson. Now, I think that Tarkanian's very upset with his team's man to man. That's why they're in this defense, the zone defense. Three on two break. Hunt. And a foul on Soto. That's five team fouls against Utah. George Ackles has the ice pack on that left knee. It was the left ankle that was sprained. Played only 13 minutes against Georgetown, but has been a lot more active in this game and has 10 points thus far. Well, with Ackles on the court, what he, instead of Spencer, it, it makes the UNLV team, all five players, have great quickness and very active defense. Bill Dixon. Bill Dixon checks in for Utah, Bill. And with 15.50 showing on the clock, a timeout. Southeast and in the West, it was Seton Hall beating Arizona. Terry DeHair, another big game and a gutty win for the Pirates in the first game here. And a shocker in a way, because people thought Indiana might roll on, but Kansas, the number three seed, advanced trouncing. Bob Knight's Indiana Hoosiers, 83-65. Jimmy Soto, the point guard, he's just a sophomore. Craig Rydalsh, number 20, three-point shooter. Byron Wilson, or check that, Phil Dixon in there. And they're sticking with that three-guard offense. Dixon misses the rebound by Spencer. And Dixon with a great job in front of Johnson. It's still UNLV ball. Well, the thing they've done since the first couple minutes of this ball game is stop the transition game of UNLV, forcing them to play half court. Abiyaki at 6'10", and Josh Grant, the big people inside. And a fall away basket by Johnson. He's got 16 points. He had eight at halftime. And Abiyaki is supposed to get around and front Larry Johnson when he has him in that position. UNLV back to their amoeba defense. Now, it has been successful the last few times down the court, but as I said, I think this is a reflection in the concern like Jerry Tarkanian has with his man-to-man. -man. Dixon misses. Grant, the rebound. Picked off by Greg Anthony. Yeah. Basket counts and a foul. Biggest lead of the game for the running Rebels. A big point. Rick Majerus felt that he had to use his timeouts properly. When UNLV gets on a run, he wants to look to use those timeouts and stop the, that momentum. number 32, Phil Dixon. There's the replay. Good dish off, forcing the defense to come over and help. And they got the fast break as a result of the turnover. Stacy Augman, senior from Pasadena. Coming off a nine-point effort against Georgetown, the third lowest output of the year for Augman, and right now he's got 13. And that's what the lead is, 13 points. Soto from the corner hits it, and it's a 10-point game. That was a big basket. They needed to stop the bleeding, and Soto did it. And Soto committing the foul. That's the 17th foul against Utah, so it's the bonus situation for UNLV. And it comes with 14-18 remaining. What a difference a half makes. First half, UNLV doesn't get to the foul line. And with, you know, 14-18 left in this half, they're in the penalty. They're going inside, and they're more aggressive offensively. That's why they're getting to the foul line. A little bit more of a message than halftime that they listen to. Walter Watts back in. Paul Apiaki is out for Utah. Johnson defending against Rydall. 
Try to pass it in, picked it off. Here comes a three on two. And a three point shot by Anderson Hunt misses from the corner. And that foul was on Anthony going over the top. His second foul and the third team foul against UNLV. They're looking to become the first team since UCLA back in 73 to win back-to-back -back national championship. They're also trying to become the first unbeaten team since Indiana in 76. So there's a big laundry list of things that the Rebels are trying to achieve. Byron Wilson back in for Utah along with Tyrone Tate. active out of this defense moving their feet better than they did uh, playing straight man to man pressuring shots Wilson is fouled going for the three Stacy Augment with his second foul so Byron Wilson will go to the line and have three attempts here Stacy Augment pressured it a little too much team foul number four against UNLV Rick Majerus Coach at Ball State after Marquette. Right, he always wanted to go west, and west he is, and who knows, maybe he'll go farther west before it's over. Huh? Get to California. Maybe Hawaii. That's beyond that. <laughs> Another league. <laughs> Byron Wilson. It's his first two. Utah very nearly had its second four-pointer of the game. Jimmy Soto had a four-point situation hitting the three and then making the foul. Grant taps it out to take. Wilson goes around Spencer who blocks it. And it's still Utah's possession. 31 seconds on the clock. The Dallas and Odessa Junior College, Larry Johnson. Voted by his high school classmates, most likely to succeed. It's interesting. Huh? Shoot, he shoot, is shoot, going shoot. to be the most successful <laughs> when the, the starting next year. And Johnson just totally blocks. Bill Dixon took the ball out of his hands and on the follow-up, Elmore Spencer. And now this team is starting to look decisive. Uh, and who's the man doing it, though? It's Larry Johnson. He's come out here and he's energized this ball club at the defensive end of the court, causing turnovers and doing it at the offensive end. Grant goes around Spencer, runs into another defender. Here's Clark. Basket's going to count in the foul. It may be Augman and it may be his second. Third, maybe. Now here's Larry Johnson right there under the basket. Now watch him come out here on the wing, contest the shot, block it, not only that, but get it back and lead the fast break for an easy two. Spencer converted it. The talents of Larry Johnson, who trying to become the player of the year, has got a great chance for that. Meanwhile, Walter Watson knocked a few people to the deck, trying to conclude a three-point play, and he does. So now it is a 57-50 to 50 affair in favor of the Rebels. You get the feeling the Rebels are playing good basketball now, but they can't pull away from Utah. Can't shake the youth. Gray good beats move. Spencer. Everett Gray, who just checked into the game. McKay McGrath also in for Utah. So it's McGrath, Watts, Wilson, Grant, and Tate. Three men on the perimeter and the two men low are Watts and McGrath. It's still Utah's ball, last touched by Everett Gray. And we'll take a timeout with plenty of time remaining. Back here at the Kingdom, where UNLV leads by nine points, I'm here with one of the heroes of the first game guard, Terry DeHare from Seton Hall. Terry had 28 points. What, what was
was the difference down the stretch? I think uh, the difference down the stretch was our defensive attention in the second half, enabling uh, the Arizona to, to come out of a lot of things they like doing, and I felt that our foul shooting at the, at the end was sensational. What do you think about this game? Get a good look at UNLV? Well, UNLV, I haven't seen them all year. They're, they're a very good basketball team, really hard to beat. For us, it would be really a great thing for us if they were able to prevail tonight in the Utah. Thank you, Terry. Well, of course, Seton Hall was able to beat UNLV a couple years ago in the tournament, Dick. All right, Leslie, and uh, they may have a chance again to play him. Wasn't it interesting Terry DeHare would like to play against UNLV? I thought that was interesting, you know, that he wants the challenge, and Seton Hall would like to see, be in a position where they could dethrone and break the winning streak of uh, UNLV. Well, the more times that people see UNLV struggle or, you know, or at least be in a battle, the more confidence the team would have and say, why not? Let's let's take a shot ourselves. 45 second clock had to be adjusted. Everett Gray, number 23. He's a sophomore. Now they go to Elmore Spencer. Anthony looking inside to Spencer. That's Grant. Josh Grant gets the rebound. Eight rebounds for Josh Grant. I just wonder offensively if, you know, Spencer is playing very good basketball for them. Why not look to get the ball to Larry Johnson a little bit more at the low post instead of Spencer? Grant is going to be called for the foul. Gray took the ball away from him, and uh, Grant just fell into him. Oh, it turned out to be a good foul because if he didn't take the foul, it would have been a, a, a basket at the other end. But now UNLV does go to the foul line. Stacy Augman, who has three fouls, comes back for UNLV, and Craig Rideout does the same for Utah. Want to remind you tomorrow night, Eastern Michigan and North Carolina, and St. John's and Ohio State begin at 7:30 Eastern time, and you will see them from the beginning in areas of home interest due to the fact that the NCAA does not want any second games of this tournament to start after 10 p.m., but areas of local interest will see those two regional semifinals from the beginning at 7.30 a.m. Now, one thing against this defense that we're seeing, Utah has got to, when they swing it to the wing, look for somebody flashing into the middle. That's where they're vulnerable, either for a shot or just swing it to the weak side, and they'll get some open jump shots. Now, McGrath and Wilson did, but they didn't find them. Now, on the turnover, UNLV coming back. We're watching UNLV at their best now, creating the turnovers. The only difference, they're not converting them into those easy opportunity baskets, which they normally do. No basket and a foul. It'll be one and one on the line. That's McGrath with his third foul. And I'd have to say, Bill, that even though Utah has used nine people that they seem to be wearing down even with all their shuttling in of substitute UNLV normally plays six maybe seven players and their guards Hunt and Anthony can go 40 minutes and they look they don't even break a sweat picking up full court with defensive pressure excellent condition team seven points for Elmore Spencer that's more than a season's average Substitutions for Utah. Paul Apiaki has checked in. Wilson has it, so it's Wilson. Right out. Soto and Grant and Apiaki for Utah running Utes and Red. You can see that middle of the lane area where Apiaki is. He's got a flash when that ball goes to the wing, right into the lane area. Grant from the corner, misses the three, and the rebound, Larry Johnson. That's his 11th rebound of this game. Spencer. Goaltending. Called against Apiaki, and Spencer now has nine points. Excellent ball movement. Movement. The ball never touched the floor once it got across half court, finding the open man down low. Anderson Hunt will replace Greg Anthony in the backcourt for UNLV. Spencer has scored the last seven points for the running Rebels, while Ackles remains on the bench, and he's been on the bench quite a while now. And well, it appeared that he had some ice on his knee. 
maybe he twisted, retwisted that ankle, which is a problem. But again, Tarkanian's going to go with the players that are playing well and contributing, and Spencer is doing that now. The lead is 12 for UNLV in white. And this defense is taking Josh Grant out of the offense for Utah. He has scored just one bucket here in the second half. He went over the top on that shot. And it'll be UNLV ball. Wilson who took the shot and now Phil Dixon comes in. Utah is 4 of 13 from three-point range. And checking back in again is Greg Anthony. Jerry Tarkanian knows his team because they came out and started the second half with this defense. The team is playing more aggressive, seem more alert with the Amoeba defense going away from their famous man-to-man. -man. Larry Johnson, basket counts and a foul. Yeah. Leslie Visser tells us that Ackles problem is tendonitis in his knee and it's something that he's had for quite a while and it's not really a special problem in this game. It's the play of Spencer. That's his problem. Now there again, Larry Johnson in the low post just overpowering the defensive man getting the easy three-point play. 19 points and 11 rebounds for Larry Johnson. And the biggest lead of the game right now. 15 points for the running Rebels with eight and a half to go. Looking to advance to the regional finals on Saturday against Seton Hall. Utah really looks confused against this defense. There's a man in the middle. Not the oh, that ball would have come through. Offensive goaltending called against Grant. I think the ball would have gone in. But, but what did we see? We saw Apiaki flash into the middle, receiving the pass. There he is, right in the lane. That is open. Grant, over-aggressive goaltending. Utah's turned it over seven times to only one for UNLV in the second half, and that has told the tale as the running youths commit yet another foul, and now it'll be two shots since that is Utah's 10th team foul. And it's Josh Grant. You know, look, looking at the faces of the Utah players, you see their faces, because you know they're, they're concerned right now. They're not sure what to do, how to get anything going offensively. And if they don't get a good spurt in the next minute or hit a few hoops to gain a little confidence, UNLV is going to run away from them. Spencer makes one free throw, but gets into double figures. Eight minutes remaining. UNLV was up by six at the half. They're up by 16 right now. Grant hits a three, so Josh Grant with his first three-point basket of the game. 66-53, the Rebels. There's a pass into Spencer. He's having a big offensive game with 12 points now. The, the impressive thing about Spencer on that play was catching the ball, being under control, then going up for the shot. Tough play for a seven-footer. Never let Grant get underway in this game. Three-point attempt missed by Phil Dixon. And a whistle inside. And a foul, Larry Lembo. It'll be against Stacey Augman. So Augman has picked up his fourth personal foul right here. We'll be back. Okay, and I will. <laughs> Seven oh five remaining in the second half, and UNLV leading 68 to 53. 57 percent shooting by the running Rebels after they really had a terrible game against Georgetown, where they shot 38 percent. Rebounds virtually even, and Larry Johnson out of a whale of a game. Uh, the reason they shot so poorly was their the inside game was cut off by the 
by Matumbo and Morning. And Morning had, was in foul difficulty for the majority of that ball game. Walter Watts in the Utah lineup. Larry Johnson again. Another turnover. Here's Anderson Hunt. Anthony Spencer missed the layup. Soto. Grant. And Hunt tips it into the hands of Johnson. Now Anthony. Close the distance and a foul. Greg Anthony tonight has only two points. Came in averaging 12. But he has eight assists, so his role has been that of a playmaker. That's right. You, you can't, with, with your lead guard, he has so many responsibilities, making sure they're running the offense correctly, establishing their, their defensive pressure. Uh, you know, so the points are, you know, they'd like to see him, and they'll need his points as they go along if they get through this game. But uh, he's, he's playing a good basketball game. Take a look at the Midwest region, with Midwest Regional at Pontiac. Ohio State and St. John's and uh, Connecticut and Duke. And Sunday will crown the regional champion. Duke tries to get to the final four for the fourth straight year and the fifth time in six seasons. George Ackles, who was on the bench for quite a while, returns to the game and Elmore Spencer goes out. He scored 12 points and had four rebounds. And a terrific showing by the backup center. This is another look that Jerry Tarkini can throw at a team. In the East region at East Rutherford, Bill, I know you'd be interested to know that North Carolina, your alma mater, goes against East Mich Eastern Michigan tomorrow. Oklahoma State against Temple. Now, as I was saying, that different look. Now putting Gray at the small forward position, having a smaller ball club out there, a quicker ball club. Well, with Augman out, you know, maybe not as quick, but with Ackles in there, quicker than Spencer. UNLV has Everett Gray. Anthony. Anderson Hunt, along with Larry Johnson. He's rarely come out in this game. Larry Johnson has played a lot. They've needed him. <laughs> Utah has scored only three points in the last six minutes. Well, game plans are a little adjusted now for Utah. They're going to have to look for the quicker shot especially if they can get some three-point opportunities to get themselves back in this ballgame. Here's Grant, flashing in and scores 15 points. This season's average is 18, as 15, as Ackles counters at the other end. Boy, how demoralizing to come back after you earn a basket like that. Yeah. Well, that's that athleticism that they have in the middle when Ackles is there. But Grant really couldn't dominate or get anything really going in this game. No. The deeper defense did the job against him. Grant scores again as 17. UNLV getting 24 points from their two centers. Pretty good output. Here's Larry Johnson. They've gotten 21 points alone from him. Seventy-four to fifty-seven. Rebels look like they're really enjoying themselves now as they start really pulling away from Utah with five minutes to go. Well, that's the type of game I think they needed. A game where they felt like they were having fun getting back into their style of play. Watts fouled inside. Everett Gray committing it. Well, the Utah running Utes won more games than any other team in history of the WAC. They were down by six at halftime, but UNLV's class showing here as Gray goes out and Stacy Augman, who is, has four fouls, returns. Rick, Rick Majerus does not like to do it. I think they're going to have to start picking up full, gambling a little bit on the defensive end. They got to create some turnovers. See if they can get something going, get uh, Mr. Momentum back on their side. He said this is the most enjoyable year coaching the young men that he had. I guess after the bypass, he says, I wasn't thinking much of pick and rolls. I'll tell you that. I was just wanting to get healthy again. Elmore Spencer back in the game replacing Ackles. 
Great drive by Anderson. Greg Anthony, Greg Anthony that is. Only his sixth point of the game. 76-59 in favor of UNLV. On the second half, we've seen UNLV getting to the loose balls, which is a trademark of theirs, creating some turnovers, stopping the penetration with their defense. Another three-point basket for Jimmy Soto, his second of the game, and he's got ten. Casey Augman with a fall away, and he gets glass on that. Augman with 15. But one thing when you're playing Stacey Augman, you don't want to allow him to drive to his left. If anything, you push him right. Augman on the steal. Three steals for Augman. They pick him off in the air like cherries. They just deflect them, hold them, control them. The man, the man that has gotten them to where they are at this point in this game and being so active is Larry Johnson. He started it with his defensive ability and also at the offensive end. The lob was off the rim. Now the Rebels come back, and they've had great balance, starting with Larry Johnson, 21, Austin is 15, Ackles and Hunt each with 12. Spencer off the bench is 12. About as good a balance as they've had in a while. Now is on Josh Grant here. Charging foul to number five, Josh Grant. Three on Grant. That's his third personal foul. Paul Apiaki, who is a junior for Utah, from Honda, replaces Watts. Kay McGrath is in, and Grant's going to get a breather. He has really worked hard for his 17 points tonight. And everything else surrounding this young man and the pressures that he's had, and it has to have been a, a draining week and a half of the NCAA tournament, plus with his sister-in-law. Very sick. Very sick. And, and Grant, of course, had to have that on his mind, and uh, Leslie mentioned at the outset. Rick Majera said, if you want to go home, you can go home. Courageous effort. Spencer with 13. UNLV still has the ball. Now we see UNLV moving the ball crisply, getting the good shot. Basket by Spencer. And the foul. Elmore Spencer now with 15 points. Watch this big, powerful seven-footer using that strength in his body to overpower McGrath inside. Substitutions come in the game. Vice is in and H. Waldman for the Rebels, but Elmore Spencer Transfer from the University of Georgia to Clark County Community College. Had some therapy as well to control manic depression. And is upfront about that particular problem he's had. Winding down to two and a half to play. 81 to 62. Rydals off the glass. H. Waldman with the rebound for UNLV. The turnovers in the second half played a big factor in this game. As Johnson put back on Augman. 23 points for Larry Johnson. 11 to 1. 11 turnovers by Utah. Only one turnover by the Rebels. They turned that problem around. Whatever Tarkanian decided to tell his team and his adjustment at the defensive end of the court going strictly to the amoeba defense that's the answer and of course larry johnson had a little bit to do with it well even lois can relax now huh yeah i guess she put the lois rosary beads away lois tarkanian jerry's wife ackles and gray will come back in Hoffman and larry johnson go out larry johnson played a marvelous game tonight now, Stacey Ogman and Larry Johnson last year made a big decision. They both had a chance to go to the NBA and be number one picks and make a lot of money, but they had made a commitment to UNLV, to their families, to an education, and they stayed that extra year. 
Tate hits the first free throw. Larry Johnson with 23 points, 13 rebounds, and three steals. And the leader of this game came up big tonight for UNLV when they were sputtering a bit in the first half. And a timeout with 2-0-1 remaining. And the Runner Rebels are headed for the regional final. Dick Stockton and Bill Cunningham back in the Kingdom. Happy UNLV cheerleaders. The Running Rebels leading 83 to 64 with 201 remaining. And Utah will conclude its season at 30 and 4. Pretty impressive record for the Rebels. Yes, Rangers. Rick Majerus said, he said, you know, at the end of the year, I'm going to have to go in and tell these kids they had a great year. And it's going to be a very emotional moment for me because I care so much for each individual on this ball club. Like you said, hey, if I had a son, I'd take any one of the kids on this ball club. Pretty good testament. And they've played hard from beginning to end. Here is Soto on the break. Goaltending. Give Jimmy Soto the basket. Our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players, Josh Grant of Utah with 17 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. And Larry Johnson with 23 points and 13 boards. For the running Rebels, who did not go to the free throw line at all in the first half tonight, Bill. 18 trips to the line in the second half, plus taking advantage of multiple turnovers by Utah. Went inside with the basketball, and they attacked the offensive glass. They became more aggressive at the offensive end of the court. The interesting thing, it all stemmed from the defensive end of the court with the amoeba defense that became active. Elmore Spencer is going to go to the line in a chance to establish a season's high. He has matched his season's high with 15. There's our score with 120 remaining. First personal. Larry Kane, a sophomore from Ogden, Utah. 6'10", big man, committing the foul, and here is Spencer. Looking ahead a little bit to the Seton Hall UNLV game. Seton Hall has to feel very good about themselves. We heard DeHare's comment, hoping that they got a chance to play UNLV. But they beat Georgetown, the team that gave UNLV their toughest ball game this year two out of three times in, in the finals of the Big East tournament in Madison Square Garden. So they're a confident ball club coming in here. They're very tough defensively. Missing from the corner, Sean Mooney. They have superior guards, guards who can score. They don't have Matumbo and Morning, but they have really an aggressive front. Oh, they're a physical ball club. They know how to play against strong physical front lines. It'll be an interesting battle between Seton Hall trying to get back to the Final Four and UNLV, everyone's favorite, running Rebels, winning their 44th consecutive game. That's the fifth longest winning streak in NCAA history. And now they're tied for fourth. Catching up on a lot of people. Barry Howard in the game. Ball out of bounds. It'll be Utah's possession with 20 seconds to go. Spencer throws it away. All big men want to be guards. And that's what Spencer was trying to live out a dream on that fast break. The game against Seton Hall, we have contrasting styles with tempo. Seton Hall likes to use the clock, run their offense. UNLV, as we've seen today, they want to get out, push the ball, and run. Game is over, 83-66. to 66. UNLV wins it.